before we had 911, we had the switchboard operator. Telephone subscribers came to rely on the ever-present, reassuring voices that greeted them when they picked up their phone or dialed zero. When a fire broke out, or a child went missing, or a loved one became sick or injured, the operator was called to summon help. And it was not unusual to hear stories of great personal courage demonstrated by operators who would remain at the switchboards to warn others of impending danger rather than flee ahead of a threatening storm. So it should come as no surprise that on that Halloween Eve in 1938, when Martians were believed to have landed in New Jersey and a full-on invasion of Earth appeared to be underway, operators remained at their posts and did their best to calm the legions of distressed callers who reached out to them in genuine fear for their very lives. The story you are about to hear is real. Straight from the AT&T Archives and History Center, here's War of the Worlds, Operator versus the Martians. The ever-popular Stardust, Raymond Raquello and his orchestra. Back in those days, the, the, to get to the telephone company was, if you didn't go to college, you went to the telephone company. It was very well thought of and prestigious type of job. Because that was the thing to be. My mother was a telephone operator, my aunt was a telephone operator, and I can't ever remember wanting to be anything but. We interrupt our program of dance music to bring you a special bulletin from the Intercontinental Radio News. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a grave announcement to make. Incredible as it may seem, both the observations of science and the evidence of our eyes lead to the inescapable assumption that those strange beings who landed in the Jersey farmlands tonight are the vanguard of an invading army from the planet Mars. Every light on that board lit. Now that board was, I would say, almost a half block long. Our board lit up when they announced that the, the Martians were coming across the George Washington Bridge. And that's when the excitement started. Some people said, what were the, did I have a chance to see them? What were they like? What did they look like? I figured them little, little peoples. I don't mean foot tall, um, little peoples, green in color with a flowing hood. Have you seen any Martians? No. They've gone over to New York. Night, the sky's alive with their lights, just as if people were still living. Because they were crying and screaming and wanting to know if there, if there was a lot of gas, if there was... Uh, a lot of destruction, were there fires? Is there a lot of shooting? Are there bodies all around? But people believed it. They really believed it that night. And I think of the ones who were begging us to get connections to their families, to their husbands, to mothers and fathers before the world came to an end so they could just tell them they loved them. At least 40 people, including six state troopers, lie dead in a field east of the village of Grover's Mill. One Man told me that people were jumping out of the windows and they were going to kill their families before the Martians could get them. You see, it was not a case of answering a light and connecting them to somebody else. All they wanted was the operator. I was just so concerned that I was going to help, be able to help all these people. And never a thought of getting out of there because my life was in danger because I believe part of it was with the old telephone company uh, training, you were very dedicated to your job. You stayed there too thick or thin. <laughs> a bulletin has handed me. Martian cylinders are falling all over the country. And one lady, probably minutes or many minutes after uh, the onset said they're as far as Chicago now. And I thought, if they're traveling that fast, 
They're going to be in Missoula before I get off duty. <laughs> this is Orson Welles, ladies and gentlemen, out of character to assure you that the War of the Worlds has no further significance than as the holiday offering it was intended to be. Any man that could cause that kind of upheaval in a whole country from coast to coast has got to be great. We were exhausted when it was over with, but I look back now, I wouldn't have missed it for anything. This has been the December 88 edition of DSG Directions. In each edition, you'll hear Bob Kavner discuss our successes and share his views on other topics affecting Data Systems Group. DSG Directions will continue to inform you on people and events throughout AT&T.